All right, guys. So some of these governors, like Andrew Cuomo, like Gavin Newsom, like Gretchen Whitner, aka Big Gretch, is what the super woke revolutionary liberals like to call her, are like mob bosses, right? They run up in your establishment, in your business, and tell you what you can and can't do. And if you don't follow their rules, they will shut you down permanently and also slap a fine on top of it okay and these mob bosses also determine who are the winners and who are the losers and right now the winners are big tech and big tech billionaires like bill gates and these winners lose touch of the losers the losers are small business everyday people like you and me who may or may not be struggling to get through this pandemic. They don't care because they're out of touch. But before we get into that, my name is Greg Foreman and you're watching A Black Conservative Perspective. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share A Black Conservative Perspective, AKA a leftist worst nightmare. You can also follow me on Twitter at GForemanBCP. Let's get it. All right, guys, take a look at some of these comments from Bill Gates in reference to how he sees the current outlook of the pandemic and the business environment going forward into 2021. Consider taking that kind of drastic action and the kind of drastic action we saw when the pandemic first began, or can there be a more nuanced approach? Well, certainly mask wearing uh, has essentially no downside. They're not expensive. Bars and restaurants in most of the country will be closed as we go into this wave. And I think Sadly, that's appropriate. Depending on how severe it is, the decision about schools is much more complicated because they're, you know, the benefits are pretty high. The amount of transmission is not the same as in restaurants and bars. So, uh, you know, trade-offs will have to be made. But this, the next four to six months, uh, really call on us uh, to to do our best because we can see that this will end, and you don't want somebody you love to be the last to die of coronavirus. When do you think life will fully return to what we thought of as normal back in January? No masks, no social distancing, uh, no other protective measures necessary. Certainly by the summer, we'll be way closer to normal than we are now. But even through early 2022, unless we help other countries get rid of this disease and we get high vaccination rates in our country, the risk of reintroduction will be there. And of course, the global economy will be uh, slowed down, which hurts America economically in a pretty dramatic way. So we'll have, starting in the summer, about nine months where a few things like big public gatherings uh, will still be restricted. But you know, we can see now that somewhere between 12 to 18 months, we have a chance, if we manage it well, uh, to get back to normal. All right, guys, so that's his opinion. He thinks that bars and restaurants should stay closed because it's necessary. He also does not believe that we will get back to normal until early 2022. Maybe, maybe, maybe at the earliest of summer 2021. Now, Bill Gates came on a lot of fire for this because he does seem like he's out of touch. It seems like he's really not thinking about the small guy, the little man. These bars and these restaurants employ a lot of Americans. The restaurant and the service industry is one of the largest employers in America. A lot of people rely on that. And a lot of people have lost their jobs to no fault of their own during this pandemic. And it almost seems like the government has abandoned us. They shut us down. They've forced us to um, abide by these mandates. Again, YouTube, I'm not saying anything that's against public health officials and what they recommend. I'm just analyzing the situation. And when you have videos like this, in which you see a struggling restaurant owner in tears, in tears, because of the blatant hypocrisy from mob boss governors like Gavin Newsom, 
it really, really, really is not a good look. I'm losing. Everything I own is taken away. And they set up a movie company right next to my outdoor patio. Right over here. Angela Marsden, owner of Pineapple Hill Saloon and Grill, outraged and emotional, posting this video on social media after she saw production tents and tables set up in a parking lot just a few feet from the outdoor dining area she's not allowed to use. They have not given us money and they have shut us down. We cannot survive. My staff cannot survive. Look at this. Tell me that this is dangerous. Put right next to me as a slap in my face. That's safe. This is safe. Just blatant hypocrisy. Blatant hypocrisy. Right, and this is par for the course in terms of a lot of the sentiments that we're getting from small business owners across the country. They're struggling to keep employees getting paid. They're struggling to bring in customers. They're struggling to survive. A lot of people built their businesses based off their blood, sweat, and tears. And it's just really, really, really unfair to have the government come in and just take it all away and then have a billionaire like Bill Gates go on national TV and continue to push the idea that everybody else has to stay shut down except, except big tech and these big corporate retail shops. Now, don't get me wrong, guys. I am a common sense capitalist. I am a hardcore capitalist, okay? I love capitalism. However, sometimes it gets to the point where you start thinking about, wow, how come sometimes small businesses lose while big corporations are winning? How does that work? Now, if you don't believe me, let's take a look at Bill Gates' net worth during April 2020. This was peak pandemic, right? $98 billion. Now, his net worth before in October uh, 2019 was $106 billion. Now it is $111 billion as of September 2020. This man has gained almost what? $13 billion basically since the peak part of the pandemic, right? I mean, again, you know, I'm not trying to count anybody's wallets. I'm, I'm not. I'm just saying. It's just funny how somebody who basically gained $13 billion in net worth is talking about keeping small businesses and restaurants shut down. Now, I mean, you also can take a look at the year to date return on some of these big tech companies that are winning, right? Like Microsoft, right? They're up 36.66% on the year. They're up. Walmart is up 25.78% on a year. Now, they have not shut down Walmart. Walmart is apparently safe to go and shop in, even though there's like, what, thousands of people in Walmart at one time? That's safe to go, but little mom and pop shop, that's not safe. You have to shut down. But Walmart, a big box retailer, can stay open. Look at Amazon. Amazon up 68.65 percent year to date on amazon it's crazy facebook up 33.28 percent they're up all these tech companies google up 33.26 percent on the year now he's saying this while small businesses are getting robbed blind 48% of small businesses fear closing for good. Some 50% of retailers could close for good, and that figure is up from 45% only two months ago. 47% of small businesses, B2B firms, are struggling to keep the lights on and might not be able to make it the next year. This is up by nine percentile points from September, where the figure was just 38%. Among those hard hit are those in travel and hospitality sector, where 62% say they might not survive in the next three months. Others who have expressed their concern include owners of gyms, beauty salons, 
health and wellness shops and spas, restaurants, marketing and advertising agencies, entertainment companies, construction businesses, law office, and even accounting firms. Those seeking some form of support to weather the storm are shops and services with closure risk of 45% to 62%. And also, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in November, the unemployment rate edged down to 6.7%. That rate is down by 8 percentage points from its recent high in April, but it's 3.2 percentage higher than it was in February. The number of unemployed persons is at 10.7 million, continued to downtrend in November, but it's 4.9 million higher than February. Guys, this is currently the landscape of our country. Right. And what's funny to me and kind of ironic is that the super liberals slash progressives swear up and down that their policies are good for small business. However, the super liberals slash progressives want the country to stay shut down for as long as possible. And they want to keep businesses closed. That's what they want to do in their ideal world. They, everything will be closed up. They will sit at home while the government sends them money, spending unlimited amounts, right? But what they fail to realize is that that's not how reality works. The government just can't continue printing money endlessly. I mean, our debt to GDP ratio, as I've said almost a thousand times on this channel, is almost what? Basically, what, 130%, right? Like, that's insane. It's never been this hi so the ironic part is that the same policies and initiatives that the progressives are pushing during this pandemic are the same policies that billionaires like bill gates are pushing and telling people but the leftists claim they're supposed to be against the rich when their policies during this pandemic at the very least is making the rich richer this is what's happening and this is something that leftists need to admit. They need to admit that what is happening right now in terms of big tech doing so well and small businesses doing so bad is a product of forcing the closures of these restaurants and small businesses in which the government has failed to make up for the fact that they forced them to close. And like I said, man, you know, people like Bill Gates, are just out of touch and that's why he got so much backlash on twitter uh on social media and in the news it's just because when you hear something like this as a small business owner it's somebody that basically has made what 13 billion dollars in net worth that ain't cash it's just it's net worth but regardless i'm not pocket watching right i ain't trying to do that i don't even like doing that but i'm just saying his net worth grew by 13 billion dollars right I would love to have my network be $13 billion, whether or not it's liquid or not. And by the way, as you guys can see how well the tech companies are doing in the stock market, it kind of tells you kind of where your money should be uh, moving forward, or at least thinking about having some of your money in that tech realm, because those are the people that's winning right now. That is who the mob, aka the government, is allowing to win. So people love to criticize the president right for his response to the virus and whatnot but at the same time the president's policies of trying to keep the country open is actually good for the small businesses he's actually looking out for the little guy right the problem is is that you have these liberals in these states like california michigan new york that have forced these shutdowns and have basically overstepped their boundaries as executives in their states those are the people that are causing mass unemployment not President Trump. Those are the people that are ruining people's lives, making people have to resort to crime, violence, maybe even suicide or something like that, just to try to cope with losing their job, losing their livelihood, not better feed their families, not being able to feed their kids. Those are the people that's causing that. But they love to throw out, oh, President Trump has caused X amount of deaths from COVID and all that, like that nonsense. The real... The real problem in this country are these liberal governors who have overstepped their boundaries, who think they're basically gods over society and they know what's best for people. And by the way, I mean, again, you got billionaires like Bill Gates going out here, echoing the same sentiment. He doesn't have any medical degree, 
He doesn't have a medical background. What does he know? Who is he to tell people what's safe and what's not safe? And why is he even speaking on the vaccine? Right? He's not a medical professional. But CNN treats him like a legitimate source of medical information. But yeah, YouTube might tag my channel for medical misinformation, even though I'm not saying anything that's against, you know, public health policies. But it is what it is. As a little guy, I got to do what I got to do. But anyways, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black conservative perspective. Peace.